Today we're talking about the 2020 budget, because hey, someone has to, and Congress certainly isn't. Now you may have heard that we recently agreed on a stopgap budget that'll stop the government from shutting down until December 20th. Although we'll see if we can have some sort of Hanukkah miracle there where the budget allocated for three weeks actually gets burned through over several months. The main leader making the argument in this budget talk is Mick the Knife Mulvaney. Now that's a nickname you'd give yourself if I've ever heard one. Hey what does Alvin the Chipmunk here think about this? Guys, for the last time, it's the knife. He didn't get that nickname because he stabbed someone violently to death in a dark alley, but rather because of his proclivity to want to make cuts to the federal government's budget and spending wherever possible. This guy has an odd relationship with the Trump administration. He was initially assigned to the Office of Management and Budget, which makes a lot of sense. I mean his whole brand is cutting spending. His problem was with Donald Trump. There has been an ongoing tussle between debt loving President Trump and his penny pinching budget director Mick Mulvaney. Mulvaney has been privately pushing Trump to get more aggressive about cutting spending, but debt and deficits have so far only ballooned under Trump. Then he got a second job of heading the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau as well, a bureau he advocated should be abolished. So he really excelled in that role. He ended a lot of enforcement and regulations. Now this brings us to today, where he became the acting White House Chief of Staff. And well, he should probably get back to talking about budgets in the background, because there's probably one reason most of you recognize his name. Breaking news, a truly stunning admission from the White House. Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney directly contradicting President Trump on a quid pro quo with Ukraine saying hundreds of millions of dollars in U.S. military aid was uh, tied to an investigation of Democrats in the 2016 election. Yeah, he's that guy. So what does Mick Mulvaney have to do with the budget? Well, with Trump tied up in impeachment, Mick as the acting chief of staff is trying to represent the executive branch in budget negotiations. And his goal is to make sure that the disagreements continue. Which shouldn't be too hard. Just start yelling border wall every time it looks like someone's about to shake hands. Now, Some of you longtime viewers might remember a few months ago when, in July, I did an episode about Congress voting to drastically increase how much money they could distribute in this budget. Because hey, we deserve it. Indiscriminately increasing the budget seems to be the only thing everybody but me can agree on these days. So that increased amount of the budget that Congress could spend in this budget by $350 billion over the next two years. But if Congress can't agree on how to spend it, well, they can't spend it. As Politico reports, Congress passed a massive budget deal earlier this year, but lawmakers still need to pass individual spending bills to divvy up the money. Until those measures are signed into law, Mulvaney and his allies get precisely the same budget restraints they proposed in June. So yeah, the basic goal for Mulvaney here is to make sure Congress can't agree on a budget, and instead force them to keep putting in stopgap funding measures. In that case, spending won't go up, and this raise that the US government gave itself won't kick into gear. It's basically arguing, Let's not shut down the government, just leave it on life support indefinitely. Of course Mulvaney, as Office of Management and Budget Director and Acting Chief of Staff, is in a very unique position to fight for this. Wow, he must have one heck of a resume today. But he's in the minority, with both parties coming together to say, we can't agree on a budget, but we do agree there should be one. They have a slightly different plan. A looming government shutdown was averted Thursday evening. President Trump signed what's known as a continuing resolution. The approval came hours before the deadline. Now that might seem like it's playing perfectly into Mick Mulvaney's hand. Oh, they passed a continuing resolution to keep the government minimally funded until December. Great. Never fear though, because they, we'll just call them budgeters from this point onward, have not quite a plan but an outline. 
Before I get into the budgeter's outline to pass a budget, I should probably justify why this is a bipartisan issue. Because well, we all know why Democrats want to spend this money, but why are conservatives on board with this? Well, one word, military. Many Republicans also oppose a full year punt, which would infuriate Pentagon officials who have warned that doing so would hurt military preparedness. McConnell in particular pushed for a budget deal and has spoken about the importance of avoiding a continuing resolution on a daily basis. You gotta support the troops, what are you gonna do, disagree with every Hummer's bumper sticker? Senator Lindsey Graham was also noted as saying, some people do want a continuing resolution. I'm certainly not in the camp. One of the things that Trump is most proud of is rebuilding the military. You do a continuing resolution, a continuing resolution, a continuing resolution, you lose all of the benefit of that. Yes, I did the entire quote. So with Congress simultaneously incredibly divided and yet united under belief that we need to do something, what's the plan to combat executive interference? Well, the main breakthrough came on Saturday when House Appropriations Chairwoman Nita Lowley and Senate Appropriations Chairman Richard Shelby agreed on how to divvy up $1.37 trillion in discretionary spending. They're doing it across 12 appropriations bills. Now that might not sound like a great solution. Well, have you tried making the entire process a little more complicated? Who needs one big negotiation when you could have 12 of varying sizes? But the main perk of this is that there are a lot of pretty uncontroversial budget areas of funding. So while we fight over whether to fight the border wall or not, we can be enforcing that people aren't dying from an unfunded healthcare system. In a somewhat promising sign, the amount that can be spent on each of these 12 areas has already been agreed to. So the remaining question is how that divided money will be distributed within each of the 12 budgets. As Politico reports, appropriators aim to pass all 12 spending bills before the government funding expires on December 20th. Now, I realize that's about as bold an announcement as saying our goal is to defuse that bomb before it blows up. Huh? But it's good to see that budgeters have a goal. Despite the optimism people have for this foolproof plan, don't lose hope in Congress's ability to accomplish nothing quite yet. They're talented fools. Negotiators have struggled for months to resolve the ongoing stalemate with funding for Trump's border wall amongst several disputes, and few believe Congress will be able to pass all 12 spending bills in just about three weeks. So those are the two primary teams. The budgeters, a team made up of defense hawks and people trying to keep social programs open, competing against the budget hawks. Now there's one other group that's critical to understanding what's going on here. We'll call them the opportunists. These are the people whose primary concern could be potentially addressed by either party and don't have strong passions in either direction. Trump has indicated to congressional Republicans that his top priority is preserving his power to transfer more funds to his border wall, something he receives under a continuing resolution. Basically, under the status quo, he can keep taking money from defense to fund the border wall by declaring it a national emergency. Unless a budget also gives him wall funding, he's probably going to be a pretty big Mick Mulvaney fan. Similarly, for conservatives, a deadlock between Democratic and Republican leaders might be the best possible outcome. The budget deal spending increases won't go into effect, Trump keeps his border wall transfer autonomy, and Congress appears paralyzed during Democrats' impeachment drive. So those are the three parties fighting for control in the 2020 budget. Republicans forming a sort of uneasy alliance with Democrats to fight for more spending against conservatives like Mick Mulvaney and Ted Cruz, who recently said freezing spending would be better than increasing spending. With a Democratic House consumed with impeachment, there is very little appetite for these sorts of common sense fiscal policies that could rein in our out of control deficits and debt. Whew, this could get messy fast. You're welcome for giving you yet another topic to debate over Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. I mean, you can only talk about impeachment so much. 
Never thought I'd say this, but oh man, is this budget negotiation gonna be interesting. Until December 20th of this year though, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. First, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out these videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Remember to subscribe. If I get a thousand of you, I can put my Patreon link as an icon in part of this video. Wouldn't that just be beautiful? Also click that subscribe button and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Lastly, give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And as always, thank you for watching.